Mr. Jay, I'm from Malaysia. Uh, why am I here? To get more knowledge of our Great. Right? Yep. Welcome. Who was the other guy who popped in? Malaysia. Uh, why I'm here, I'm gain more knowledge to, uh, about uh, rapping to adapt in Malaysia. from spectators who don't know anything about four ball rules. They love it. <laughs> they said that if four ball would always be like this, I would stay here forever watching these games. And that's a challenge for us. And by us, I'm not meaning the referees or myself. For us all, the floor, where do we want to take us? And where do we reach the wall? that we can't go any further. The other problem we have is floorball is getting faster and faster and faster. I mean, it's two times, three times faster than it was 10 years ago. And when I started with floorball 24 years ago, that time floorball, if I would watch it now, looks like walking floorball. I have to say that the feedback we got from spectators who don't know anything about four ball rules, they love it. <laughs> they said that if four ball would always be like this, I would stay here forever watching these games. And that's a challenge for us. And by us, I'm not meaning the referees or myself. For us all, the floor, where do we want to take us? And where do we reach the wall? that we can't go any further. The other problem we have is floorball is getting faster and faster and faster. I mean, it's two times, three times faster than it was 10 years ago. And when I started with floorball 24 years ago, that time floorball, if I would watch it now, looks like walking floorball. That's for the teams. You go outside, or if it's raining, cats and dogs. Or for those who will eventually end up to some events to Europe, if it's snowing, do it out, do it inside in the corridor. But of course, you can do it outside. Most of the Scandinavian referees, no matter what the weather is, they always go out. Because when it's minus 20, it's pretty fresh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a matter of clothing, right, Rello? Yeah. <laughs> it was like minus 12 when you were picked up. Yeah, when, yeah, when I picked you up from John and told you to put, wear the yellow jumps. <laughs> okay. Follow the instructions given by the match organizer regarding the pregame ceremony. Somebody has ceremonies or they don't. But when you get into the venue, then talk to the organizers, who, whoever that is, that what is expected from you in the beginning of the game. <coughs> and if there are some guidelines, don't enter the ring before the right time. And if there are no pre-game ceremonies, don't enter the ring before the teams. The teams are in the leading role. You are just supporting. This is very important. It also goes with the fact that you never, as a referee, have to hurry. Take the time you need. And when you start the game after breaks, after whistle, whatever, make sure that the players are ready and that the goalkeepers are ready. It's much easier. You prevent unnecessary, unhappy people to, to come up if you do that. Take the time and give the time. Of course, no like a deliberate delay of the game or anything like that, but just like normal, because it takes time to tie the shoelaces or things like that. Be human, understand. <coughs> and no signs to form during motion, except delay penalty and advantage. It's like, if you run and you have your hands like this, it doesn't look that good. 
In some occasions, if you have a fast whistle, you have to show the direction and then you start running. Maybe your hand is like this for a while, but do those things separately. This is like a general guideline. The most important thing is that you understand what it's all about. Do it your way. Don't try to imitate anyone. Do it as you think is good. But these are basic guidelines. While running, you run, and then, because running, I mean, it, for example, if you are showing delayed penalty, your hand up, it's not that easy to run. Most important is to show the direction right after you have a whistle, because that is something what everyone is expecting. Because you know what happened when you blow the whistle. If you have 1,500 spectators, 12 players, two goalkeepers and 10 field players in the field of play, and you whistle, what happens? <laughs> Everybody looks at you. And if you blow the whistle, then you stand like this. <laughs> it's better this way, right? Consequence sign made by the whistling referee when necessary or if asked. It's, I would say, it's pretty often, what was it? Or then even the facial from the team side. You don't have to do this every time. <laughs> and then we have this very mysterious thing. We can also talk. We can say pushing. Incorrect it. We don't have to show. We can talk. This is also good if offense happens in or near to goal scoring center, but you don't necessarily have the time in those fast situations. In the fast situation, the direction is much more important. Then the auxiliary signs, meaning like if you show to your pair these no offense signs like this, that's okay. But then sometimes, for example, if the ball hits the goal bar, I've seen referees show it to each other like this, so that they know. What's the problem now with this? Yeah. The, uh, yeah. Because we have it as well. And the sign is this. I didn't like this sign. When the IFF event manager, Mr. Sarah Mitchell, was making the guidelines and the rules for that, I would have preferred this because this is much nicer. That's what they do in Iceland, going to the phone, because they go to the phone to the match secretary in ice hockey, and there's some guy upstairs who's watching the videos. This is my favorite. It's cool, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on. Which is better than that? <laughs> so that why, that's why these auxiliary signs <clears throat> are basically just between you. Of course, the usage in bigger countries has decreased dramatically after the headsets. So now the referees talk to each other, so they don't have to show. Do you still show on and Andrew this? Occasionally. Yeah. 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 And the problem is, as you know in life, always learning out of bad habits is much more difficult than learning something new. So, old school stuff and this, you know, signs and things, it's been pretty hard to try to learn out of it, to be honest. But we are on our right way. We are, we've managed to decrease it, at least 50%. <laughs> yeah. And, and at least we have time to do it. Yeah, we still have time to do it. Yeah. So, we, before we retire. Yeah. So, now we have like living proof that also old dogs yeah. learn new stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and as well said, headsets nowadays, it uh, clarifies most of our situations. We don't have to show very signs so much, but some, sometimes, yeah. yeah. As 
Then as Andrew men mentioned, getting rid of bad habits is a challenge. When I started my referee career, I had this what I call beautiful hand syndrome. <coughs> and I whistled. <laughs> like this. What happened behind my back? I didn't have a clue. <laughs> I had to learn a way from it. It took me three years. I had to force myself to be able to do this instead of this. <laughs> so the sooner when you start, you get some kind of an observation and somebody's looking at your manners and how you move and things you do, the sooner you figure it out, the better it is. The easiest way to do it is to ask if you're referee a game with your hair, you ask a friend or then you buy a tripod, put your phone on that, put that red magical button video, and you video the game. You see yourself. I remember when I first saw myself on a video. There was a very fast situation in front of the goal. Uh, there was a whistle and a very fast read, and the camera started to move and follow the player. We were instructed, of course, to run. I was like, where am I? I remember the situation, I, I whistled. Why am I not in the picture? Then like 12 seconds later, I saw myself coming into the, <laughs> <laughs> into the frame. I was like, what the fuck? This looks awful. I was supposed to run, and I was walking with this. No. That's what I mean. Check for the videos, and if you don't have like a stream or whatever, Ask your friend because we all have the devices already. It gives pretty good impression of yourself. Yeah, uh, I I have one example when uh, referees start in their early career. Um, their self confidence isn't high enough to make decisions and to be be proud and stand behind their decisions. And I'm just giving you a good example. As as we all said, following the hand. Uh, versus see, looking at the situation and keeping your hand up. Because you have to observe what's happening, although you have your sign up. Uh, talking about the new referees, in many, many times when they show a, a sign, they do like this. Because they, are, they aren't confident. They are a bit shy of the situation or what. So, when, whatever you do on the field, keep your head high. Look what's happening. There's nothing, you don't have to be shy, you don't have to hide or anything. Remember to keep your head up always. Not like this, but like this. And when it comes to the signs, when you look at the...